So pretty much forget 2019, it's kind of over. We've got the run up to Christmas and it'll be heads down uh, until we get through that. So what happens with social media and, and that side of things is it's almost like, you know, someone quite unprofessional painting a wall where they'll get the decorating tools and they'll start in the middle and kind of go out and they won't cut in properly and do it beautifully like your, your, you know, your granddad or your grandma might have done in the olden days. So it's the same with brands when they're approaching social. You need to first of all figure out what do you stand for? What are you all about before you do anything? Because otherwise you're just open to criticism, subjectivity, getting things wrong, etc. So the first thing really that you want to be doing for you to get anywhere in social is figuring out all of these things. So it's quite a lot of work. Um, there's easier ways to do it as well, but you need to understand what your purpose is as an organisation and not this purpose washing of, you know, oh, we're going to save Africa because we think it's a cool thing to do. You know, deeply, it's in your organisation. What's the vision, the mission, and importantly, what's your story? And I do a lot of these brand days and it's so sad when you see, you know, a CEO coming in or a founder and they're saying, oh yeah, we just thought we could make money doing this. And it's like, come on guys, really? So from that point of view, of course it's good to be commercial and opportunistic. It's much better if it's truly a passion. And that's how your brand will endure, if you mean it, man, you know, like the Six Pistols. So then what is it? So could you explain it to your gran or your grandfather in a line, in an easy way? No business bollocks, nothing like that just exactly what this is. It's one of the hardest things to do. And a lot of projects are people acting like something they're not and actually straying away from their core purpose. They're almost ashamed of what they sell. They want to always do something different and better or what the competitors are doing. Who's the target customer? Um, so one set of customers initially who will grow your business profitably forever. Who is that? And then you can widen that out. This is going to be super helpful for targeting on social. Their motivations, you know, do they want to be healthier? Do they want to be more stylish? Do they want to be happier? Do they want to be funkier? Um, do they want to have value? Do they want to save time? What is it that you're offering them in terms of motivations? Then your USPs, why would I cross the street to go to you? Why are you inherently better? Then your values and your personality, very important for social. How does this person act, look and sound? It's a really big deal. Um, and then role statement. So your role in life and the life of your customers is to do what? Which is a really big thing as well. And then the last thing is you boil it down to a couple of words. So that's about 18 months work in a couple of minutes. But basically, that's what you want to do. Then once you've figured that out and you're all happy with yourself, you've got another bit of work to do, which is uh, what's my social media strategy? So box one you've ticked, so brand. Box two, what are your goals on social media? When you actually go on there, again, most people just dive straight in like a ball pit, you know, a soft play, and just kind of get on with it. They've not thought about it at all. Oh, I'm just going to dabble in Instagram. So that's nonsense. You've got to think strategically, why am I on there? What am I trying to do? What behaviours do I want to change for the people that see it? Then the target audience, and there's so much exciting stuff that Alison will talk about later, you know, just in terms of targeting on Facebook and making sure things convert. Platforms, what platforms do you want to be on? There's quite a lot of them now. And you just can't be good at all of them. You know, so it's like gambling. You can't be good at blackjack and poker and roulette and this and that. Maybe, but I doubt it. So pick one sport and be good at it, you know. Um, and, and just sort of then stray into the other areas and get aces and places. Content, what content are you going to be putting out there? You know, and starting to really think about that. Why are you putting that content out there? Where's it building? Where's it going to? Rather than it just being, you know, a must religiously, um, you know, actually post every single day. User value. You know, you want people to laugh, cry, be entertained, be excited, you know, in terms of your content. It's not just, oh, here's another latte, right? What are you actually doing that's changing that person's day in a positive way? How are you truly engaging them? Then, boring stuff, um, so <laughs> growth, uh, you know, fans and all the rest of it. So again, you obviously want to grow a big base if you can, but more important than that is actually having an engaged base. So you're far, you know, like the Love Island contestants, what have you got? 
10 million followers and they get, you know, 300 likes. You know, if you do it as a percentage, no good. So just, if it's a small number, don't worry. Your CEO will want a big number, but they don't understand this stuff. So, you know, just talk to them about it and say, you know, quality over quantity. And then, as I say, yeah, some boring stuff in here, you know, workflows. How's this going to work in your organisation? We'll come on to a bit of that later. Resources, never enough resources in food and drink, right? We're all get under-resourced and under-nourished and under-budgeted, but never mind, underpaid, overworked. Oh, there's one over, overworked. Um, and then the last one's performance. So you, you want to measure it, right? You want to know what's going right. So then going on to this stuff, um, it's all about budget. What are you doing with your budget? What we've been imploring people to do is look at 80, 80%. So 80% of your total marketing budget should be at least going into digital, if not totally on social. Not many are thinking like this, you know? And social, as we'll come on to later, is quite expensive now. It's an expensive paid game. But there's lots of stuff, if you reviewed your marketing budget, lots of waste. Lots of stuff that's just not working. But it's just then having the appetite and the hunger um, to try new stuff. So it wouldn't be a social media presentation without quoting a couple of Gary Vaynerchuk things, if you, if you know him. This is a great tip, which is start filming now. Start filming today. Start documenting what's going on. So don't sit down and say, I'm going to do this amazing video that's going to be a brand video that shows how loungers works or how bills works or whatever. Because then you're trying to write Titanic or Avatar or some box office smash. Just keep filming stuff and you'll find through all the stuff that you've got, it's an editing job, not a creation job. So just get someone in your organisation that's handy with a camera, hire an intern, whatever it is, and just get them to shoot constantly. And interesting things will happen. Much more interesting than you trying to do a cheesy infomercial, right? So, for example, all of these wonderful people on here are, are you know, huge in our industry. So, you know, Tommy at um, Oaxaca and Laura at Caravan and Alan Yao and Bill and, and Misha and, and the guys from Las Iguanas. Again, I bet they've got regret. I bet they wish that years ago they started filming their journey. What a show that would have made. Did everyone see Rebel Chef last night on Channel 4? Um, again, great filming the drama, filming the stuff that's going on, having the foresight to do that. So again, you know, to follow Bill around, you know, he's also decorating the stores, uh, the restaurants, as well as doing uh, design, as well as looking at the ads, as well as looking after staff, as well as, you know, growing the business, and as well as getting the ingredients and, and doing the menu stuff as well. He's involved in all of that. Personally hanging up pictures in the new restaurants. To follow him around 24 hours a day would just be a joy. Some bad news is the um, basically best practice at the moment is saying that you want between 80 and 100 pieces of content a day for you to stand out online. 80 to 100 a day. That's a lot, right? So we're all kind of doing this. <laughs> but the big thing here is that you actually want to be in the no business. So it used to be, and maybe still is for, for a lot of you, when you're doing a campaign or you're doing your post and all the rest of it, you maybe go to your boss or your, someone's coming to you or whatever and they're saying, which one do you like out of the five? It's now the flip. Which one don't you like and we'll live with the other four? And this is a game of not being perfect, getting stuff up there, building momentum, being seen. Because the other thing we've got to remember as well is if you're only posting this organically, it's less than half as effective as your emails probably performing. So you put it up there and you think, oh great, everyone's seen it. It's like 7% of people are actually seeing your organic post. And your emails will be performing at 12, 17, 22%, right? From that perspective, just always have that in your mind. You know, Instagram and Facebook want to make money and they're throttling you and they're not letting you get your message out there until you're paying. A really good thing for people to download um, <laughs> is the Gary V content model. Um, and it's an 86 page doc of, apparently called it a doc of insanity. Um, but it's loads of pictures, not loads to read and all, it's quite easy. But within it, it is the absolute playbook of how to do content. And it's just a wonderful thing, free, na free on the internet, just download it, 86 pages. But it goes like this, which is quite interesting. Again, back to the not, docu uh, not creating, the documenting. Then basically what you're looking at is create this pillar content, long form content, film, 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 record, record, record. Then it goes into editing jobs. So it comes down from 
you know, Facebook, podcasting, YouTube, and, and IGTV, your longer format uh, platforms, then goes into micro content and stories. So you chop it all up into the right amount of uh, it's a time for each of these to, to be consumed. So the micro channels, your LinkedIn, etc. you can see it all there. And then what you want to do is start getting written articles up there as well, which is going to help complete the loop in terms of SEO. So you've got uh, Medium and you know blogs, uh, email marketing, LinkedIn, etc. So if you do a podcast, for example, get it transcribed and get it fired out and actually see if an editor can then top and tail it with your SEO keywords, which will help as well. So it's not just thinking about social a lot of the time, it's thinking about your digital ecosystem, the whole thing and how it all plugs together. So then, if that's not enough work, um, unfortunately there's more, it goes into like little rabbit holes like uh, Inception, the movie. So you get a ton of content, micro content, articles, then you go back to that sort of tranche of work and then say, right, what's the community saying? What are people saying about this? Do they love it? Do they hear it? Have they got comments? Could you get clues from what they're saying that will give you clues to make more content that's interesting? So it becomes into that spiral. And then you do that stuff and then you put the community-driven micro content out, which is then your loyal fans, your loyal brand fans. So actually, if you think about doing that quite a lot, and there's many, many channels and all the rest of it, you might be getting up to 40, 50 bits of content quite easily. But it's really easy for Gary Vaynerchuk to say this because I think he's got 30 people working on his personal brand alone. So um, most of you might not even have 30 people in your company, right? So um, that's a hard thing. However, not to overwhelm you with that, it's just to show you what great's looking like and you can maybe come back a few steps and, and aim towards that. But here, always think about it in this context for your, your social media and, and your marketing team structure, actually. This is the mar modern marketing department. And the buzzword at the moment is performance marketing. That's what everyone's wanting. They want to optimize everything. So make sure your brand's healthy and you've got someone really great looking after it and they would die for it. And then you've got, really simply, acquisition one side, retention the other side, and content speeding all of that. Now the mistake so many of us make, and I was absolutely guilty of this when I was at Yo and Pret, put all my effort into acquisition, not enough effort into loyalty and retention. But really, flip the whole thing. 80-90% of effort should be on retention because it's much easier to get those people to come back if they even slightly liked you than it is to get someone brand new when they're taking a risk. So the modern market department as well is going to be really interesting because it's not actually going to have marketers in it much at all. So in the future and soon, and brands are doing it already, um, it's going to be comedians, it's going to be novelists, it's going to be playwrights, it's going to be uh, people writing scripts, you know, and Dave at the top there won his Mercury Music Prize last night, but it's going to be made up of that. And you'll have a couple of marketers that will be a bit more sort of on the analytical science side. And it's just content makers that will be your uh, marketing department. So then going on to dark social, not as, uh, as sinister as it sounds, but basically there's so much action now happening in messaging apps that marketers can't really get into. It's quite frustrating. So, you know, you've got WhatsApp, you've got Messenger, you've got all these things going on, and it's going to be harder and harder and harder for us as marketers and, and, and business people to try and break into those conversations. You know, it's that bedroom door, parents stay out, sort of, you know, teenager's bedroom. So here, uh, there's some interesting stats just in terms of the size of this thing, you know, just to put it into uh, perspective. So 80% of all social sharing is done on one of the dark messaging apps rather than the public ones. 2.19 billion is the global messaging users by the end of this year, and then 1.5 billion global WhatsApp users. So we're missing out on a huge opportunity and people are just getting so tired of the news feed and the same old stuff and more ads and less interest. And so it's a kind of funny time for social at the moment. And if that's not enough, we've got no likey that's going on, which is, Austria, Canada, and maybe a couple of other countries are testing no likes on Instagram, which is a very nice thing for mental health and vanity and all these things. Uh, but again, as a marketer, what do you tell your boss? What do you tell the CEO? What you, you know, when you're looking at that, how can you measure if something's going well? Well, basically now, what you'd be looking to do is not focus on likes at all, or comments even. Really think about saves and shares. 
So if someone felt so compelled to hit that little paper airplane and send it across to whoever, then really that's quite a big compliment to you that it was worth sharing, hopefully for good reasons. And then they're saving it as well. So within your business insights as well, then what happens is you can see profile visits 34. That's another key metric for you. People actually checking out your profile and then going through to hopefully a link that will take them through to your, your, your website or whatever. The reach then goes up to nearly 7,000. And then here, when you go into insights as well, you've got this really great little, almost like an arcade machine of kind of options, you know, like the one arm bandit thing, where you can sort of line it all up and you can choose, I'd like to see all posted within the last year within save. And then it'll tell you all of them. So, you know, if you've set yourself up as a business account. So it's quite incredible. It's a really good thing to do. There's some other ways that we can get into Messenger as well, which is quite exciting. On the left, it may be a wee bit hard to see, but this is uh, Jasper's Market, which is sort of a made-up, mythical uh, Facebook Whole Foods, uh, just for examples. So here, what they've done is they've put a sponsored message, but the call to action sort of greyed out just below the apple there, which is um, learn more. Um, so you hit that, and then you go into Messenger, and then what you can do is you can interact with the person directly in Messenger saying, do you want a coupon? Do you want to know about this? You know, all these kind of things. So that's a really good strategy uh, for looking at that. The other one that's been good is universities have been using it as well for discussions in terms of, you know, the clearing that you get, you know, when you maybe haven't sorted out your uni or whatever. You could then hit that and you could have a direct chat to try and get your university place and beat the people that are phoning the, the, the old way. So that's over there. Then over here on the right, um, you've got what I'm seeing is creepy messaging. So you've got creepy ads within your messenger and you're going through your news feed and it's like, Ugh, get, out of my, get out of my messenger feed, please. Um, but people are doing it. So again, it's something to explore. If it's a brand you really love and enjoy, there might be a good reason for it to be in there. Um, but again, you can hit people up there and maybe also it can be contextual where it could be if you're a bar, you could say, enjoying your chat with friends, you know, make it in real life and there's a drink on us. Or, do you know there's ways that you can do that, which is quite interesting. So it's testing and learning. You know, you're not, no one's going to die. So just give it a try, see what happens. So yeah, then there's automation stuff that can help all of us as well, which is really good. So there's response assistant, which is in the back end as well. Really useful for businesses, especially if you're a smaller business and you maybe won't get to the request for a little while. It's just really good for you to be able to sort of automate that and go in there and say, look, you know, thanks for getting in touch. I'll be, I'll be back soon or here's a link and go and look at that. And then what's interesting as well is you can build like a three button option response as well. So again, you can personalize it, say a little bit about stuff and then give them kind of three options to go. You can also start getting like Just Eat I've got here very customized. So you can work with designers and programmers to then have something super slick. Um, but that could start costing you quite a lot of money. So just eat here, I've got, you know, you hit get started and it take, took you through. And then it's kind of doing all this stuff and you're going, oh, this is really great. And I'm feeling really romantic about just eat. This is great. And please read our privacy policy. What a passion killer that is. I was just all in the throes of passion with just eat. And then all of a sudden I have to read a privacy policy. It was like a cold shower. So um, they need to maybe work out what's happening there in terms of conversation because they really kind of cocked it up. But then we got back to good stuff. So inspire me, oh great, and there's pizzas and kebabs and this and that. So again, not everyone's got it right, but at least they're doing something. So it's worth looking at. The biggest disappointment though, when I was looking around was Deliveroo. So they don't have one. So I said, hey, test and see if we've got a chat bot. I'm still waiting. So lucky I wasn't starving. So yeah, Deliveroo's getting a big fat X for that bit. So then just looking at some trends, um, and, and just some things to know and when you're planning your content. It's four times as, m as many consumers would prefer to watch video about uh, a product and read about it. So again, it's how can you make that economical? How can you make that work, etc. And then we've got Smoothie Man here. So basically, people gaze five times longer at a video than static content on the Facebook feed. Interestingly, Facebook feed, but Instagram stories. So again, think about that. And a brave move would be almost to have a policy where you say, I'm doing no static content at all. I'm going completely video. It's the way it's going. So you might as well get good at it now. 
So it's like quite an interesting thing to look at. And then there's sort of three main types of uh, video that are going on at the moment. So there's snack, which is almost like a kind of short meme or something kind of interesting, you know, it's like six seconds, something like that. Then you've got long, and that can be anything from an edited clip from a TV show to a full show and all these kind of things. Um, so again, you can think about how you might structure that stuff. And then you've got live. So live is interesting. I mean, everyone's a walking TV channel now, having live. So the biggest issue with that is everyone's a walking TV channel, right? So the content sucks. And what happens is someone fires up, someone's went live, you go, oh, great, and you look at it and you go, magic. And then it's someone's double chin or it's their feet. And then they sort of crap themselves and turn it off and then they go away and it's like, oh, right. So basically, if you're going to go live, plan it like the one show. Plan it like a TV show and say, right, this is all the steps. This is how it's going to work. And really think about that because most brands don't and they, yeah, they just sort of disappear. 86% uh, are using mobile for social media. No huge surprise there, I don't think, but it is quite a big number. This might make you feel a bit trippy, but 75% uh, of millennials now watch videos in vertical mode only. We're even too lazy to rotate our phones, um, which is a bit crazy. I'm sure there'll be an app for that soon. And then creating both the image and the video in the correct dimensions is a really big deal. Because obviously you've got, you know, Instagram television, which then cuts off kind of everything. So you're having to maybe look how you're shooting things maybe two or three different times to be able to get that edit. The first three seconds of your video are the most important. Um, so basically, if you've not impressed the person by the first three seconds, they're out. You know, they're going to go somewhere else. So just make sure that, you know, you're getting that as interesting as possible. And then, you know, building up to the payoff for the person. Instagram television, IGTV is really exciting and there's so many lateral thoughts that you can have about how you use that. So Airbnb is kind of quite hidden altogether and basically it's got as, you know, a, a, a feature on the world's largest telescope and points of interest. So the more lateral, the more entertaining and the more TV-like you think about these things, it's not a direct sales channel. You know, it's about you getting engagement from people. Um, ASOS are doing like the Dr. Martin's Fit Challenge, they're testing out products, obviously you can do recipes and all that, but that feels quite basic, but again, have a think about what you could do there. Also, um, Alain Cafe, if you've seen this in London, it's just the biggest candy floss pinker than pink place in the world, but they're doing smart things, they just seem to be shooting all this on an iPhone, and they've got an almost daily, you know, every few days, uh, little TV program, and it's kind of following the adventures of the entrepreneur founder, customers, new shops, the area, new products. I mean, it's got a long way to go, but they're doing it, and they're the only one that's doing it. So it's quite interesting um, to look at that. So it'd be, be good to see where that goes. Also, TikTok's on the scene as well. Does everyone know about TikTok? A little bit. Nothing more to say at the moment than just go and check it out, play with it, have fun, see what happens. You know, it's quickly becoming, you know, 30s plus. Um, and it's just going to do what Insta and Facebook did before. So get involved in it, have some fun. You know, basically your lip sync and, and comedy and talent videos could be a great thing for your staff. So again, just get to know it, right? I mean, we all know how we felt maybe the first time you used Snapchat or whatever, like, what is this thing? So again, you know, it's quite an interesting thing. And last year, it was the most downloaded app in the world. So uh, probably better have a good look at that. WhatsApp's quite interesting as well. Does anyone use my status on WhatsApp? Yeah? You're the only person I've ever found. You're a unicorn. <laughs> um, basically, hardly anyone seems to use it in the UK. Huge um, in Southern Asia and in Southern America. Um, and basically, it's almost you sort of doing your, your quick update, your, your Instagram story. Um, so it's very basic at the moment. There's not a lot you can do with it, right? It's just kind of, even the stickers and stuff are a bit crap. So basically you can kind of say, I'm having this or I'm doing this. So you post a photo or a message. Then everyone that's friends with you can see that if they look at status as well. But no one's really looking at status yet. So, but it's coming. So again, just go and check it out. Have a bit of a play. Um, it's quite interesting. But just to give you some global figures on that, Instagram stories is 500 million. Uh, people are lo looking at that daily. WhatsApp uh, status, weirdly, is just less at 450. Facebook Messenger and Stories is at 300 million, and Snapchat is at 186 million. 
So that's kind of the order of importance and the order of play. Obviously, it's different per market, and you know WhatsApp status hasn't really happened here yet. But it really starts to give you the idea of what's going on, and also Instagram Stories is now far outperforming the Instagram newsfeed. So you really start thinking about you know focusing on Instagram uh, Stories. And then just on the subject of stories, um, there's not much movement up here and stuff, but basically just to kind of show you, there's some really interesting things going on. It's great if you're going to add quite a lot of Instagram's native tools to your stories um, because you'll be rewarded for that, you know, just in terms of distribution. On top of that as well, what's happening is some of these have went the extra mile and added like a third party app. So they go and do the artwork somewhere else and then bring it back. And that gives you real standout in Instagram stories, just rather than using the normal fonts that everyone else, because you look like everyone else. So what happens is a kind of cat and mouse game where, you know, the Fish Hotel or, you know, whoever it is else up here, they do that. And then someone goes, that looks good. And they do the same. And then so they need to find something else to do. So it kind of goes on like that. But again, if you've got a really strong brand, strong brand style, try and do as much as possible heavy design in your brand style and then add to it when you're putting it up there. So designing for the gram, um, you know, it's all neon and pink and tiles and all the rest of it. But a couple of things just to talk about here, which is it's not dinner for three anymore or dinner for four. It's dinner for 3,000, dinner for 4,000. So if someone has a great experience or someone has a terrible experience, all those people are going to know about it. So it's really thinking about that seriously and setting your restaurant up for that and making sure that people are having an amazing time. Shadows are a problem. Um, especially in slightly older restaurants where the lighting's quite bad, really think about that across your entire restaurant. Sit in ev or pub or whatever it is, hotel, whatever you do, but sit in every single seat and try and take photos of things. And if there's a big hairy hand with a uh, iPhone in it and all the rest of it, then it doesn't work. You're going to—it's not even enough for ops just to worry. The light bulbs work. They're going to have to say, "Is it photogenic and is, is it working?" So a shadow will just kill the opportunity for that person to share that photo. So start thinking about that and also start thinking about your restaurant as well in zonal kind of areas. So if you know a particularly good area for light and people come in that you think are likely to be more Instagram friendly people, put them over there and it will just save yourself some hassle. Um, but it's getting really bad at the moment. You know, an example, I was doing a, a little course in Scotland the other week and people sent back a Bellini because it wasn't grammable enough. But sure, I don't want to glass them probably, but you know, from that, from that point of view, you're just going, what? So no, it didn't taste good or it didn't look good. It didn't look good enough to be photographed. That's what we're up against. Um, it's because of these people, uh, the Love Island, <laughs> Love Islanders. Anna has written here, you know, first world problems, but the lighting in the last picture was terrible. Poor you. Um, so basically with that, that's reality though. That's how people are thinking. So maybe for your restaurant or your pub or whatever it is you've got, you might want to invest in a couple of ring lights. They're about 30, 40 quid. It's not that bad. But if someone comes in and they're really serious about it, not bad to have that on hand just in case. Or set up a grammable sort of area within your restaurant that that's always there as part of the feature. If you've went to the trouble to, of decorating somewhere nice within that, like that. Um, so there's big queues, um, you know, even just to sit here which is absolutely crazy. So, again, people just want that shot. It's like the autograph hunters or the, the kids at football games. They just want the shot. That's what's happening. And then travel's not helping us. So this is some travel magazines, um, which are basically then listing out the hotel and the experience and the this and the that. And then boxed off, there is the most Instagrammable shot you can get at that venue. So it's things like the orange starfish above the bed in the deluxe sea room. Um, in, at the Grand Hotel Miramar. So if you don't have that room, you're kind of snookered, unless you get lucky. Um, and then Hilton Seychelles, the silhouettes of the palm fronds, I think what fronds are, fronds at the sunsets over the beach. So that's the way life's going. And if that's happening in travel, it's going to come into retail and it's going to come into food very, very soon. Um, and last year was the year of the flower arch. Um, I think they're sort of dead now. I think I've seen Poundland with a flower arch the other week. So that's it. It's all over, people. Um, this is a new thing. So uh, Sticks and Sushi just looking incredible with that sort of geisha going up the wall. So it's going to be even wilder uh, sort of installations, which is going to be really interesting. 
Um, what's a good thing as well is you can hook up with drink, drink suppliers, food suppliers, and they'll give you um, you know, a little swing and it's branded up as them. You might be able to co-brand, but you might get something for free, which is quite nice. Um, and a lot of it is about photo composition as well. This is for meat liquor, um, and it's you know promoting the new beers and the new sizes and the new uh, cocktail that they had, but the composition is extraordinary. And too many people just don't even give that a second thought. They just kind of put it there and point and shoot, and that's it. Really think about that, because that's the thing that will sell a thousand pints, a million pints. You know, that that's the way to go. One of those, rather than lots of crap, is the best idea. And this one actually came up today, which I just thought was so beautiful. So uh, it's Lena Stores, uh, which is a, an amazing pasta makers from White Rabbit Fund. And uh, I mean, just look at that. It's beautiful. Everything about it's beautiful. The colours and what the lady's wearing and th yeah, it's stunning. So I was putting the thought into it, really making the effort. It has to be um, beautiful. Um, also think about your visual merchandising. Back to the Bellini point, um, is it good enough? Really make your drink stand out something different. Champagne just in a saucer itself just doesn't, photographs like a sausage roll, right? It's rubbish. So from that point of view, what can you do to really think about going beyond the spec that the bartender's giving you or the head of drinks or whoever it is? And if you fancy doing that, uh, I shaved my legs a couple of weeks ago and did this one. Um, so again, you know, really just start to think about how you can do it differently. You know, it's so boring seeing stuff on the bar and the blurred bartender's arms and everyone's doing that. It's rubbish, you know. So again, really think differently about what you could do here. Um, and then, I mean, this is a really fun one. You know, it was a, a stand that was down at the South Bank Centre and all the influencers um, were going nuts for this, right? Millions and millions and millions of people were seeing this. And whatever it cost, I can't remember, but the margin on this product must be insane, right? It's a banana, some chocolate, and some wee hundreds and thousands thing. So from that point of view, you know, what can you do that you know is a home run in terms of Instagrammability? You know, it's not good enough just to have a good product that tastes good anymore. Unfortunately, um, not many are going to survive. And then just always thinking about, and it didn't rhyme with Instagram, so I had to say tweet, but anyway, so but just looks good enough to tweet. Really think about that. Would you put it on your own feed and be honest with yourself? And if not, don't do it. Also, um, looking at sort of what, uh, you know, sort of fashionable places are doing, is sometimes give you, I don't even know what this is called, I've got no idea, glitter bulb or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, on here, um, with, with that stuff, it's just important if you go to Glastonbury or you go to the Soho House Festival or, you, you know, look up a bit and see what everyone else is doing out in the wider world. What's happening in the catwalks? What's the latest designs? What's the latest house things? All these things are going to come back to us. So again, you know, Glitter on the Face was sort of so last year and then this was happening at the Soho House Festival this year. You kind of have to be bold, I guess, for it to work, but hey-ho. Um, but again, this was going around the internet quite big. Uh, gifts, I just don't understand why so many people don't have gifts. Like, I, I searched for a prep gift yesterday and they don't have them, which is insanity. Giphy is this incredible website. It does all these things and it's 500 million daily active users. 500 million. So if you get your brand there and you actually have a gift that ranks highly for a word like coffee, guess what? You know, you're going to get a lot of eyeballs on it. So here, um, you've got Duncan uh, doing their donut fries. That was the top gift for around a month in terms of usage, and it's just free advertising. It costs you less than 20 bucks to get the gift uploaded, and it doesn't take a genius to make the gift either. So, you know, if you've got a small budget and a small spend and all that, I would really focus on that. Um, and then just a tiny bit on voice, but obviously, um, Geraint's going to talk about this later on in more detail, but that's what my Alexa says with my Scottish accent. Um, but just some things to think about with that is that how do you think your customers are interacting with it? So, for example, when they are shopping for stuff or, you know, if you've got products that are on Amazon as well you're trying to sell, are they going to just ask for gin in the sort of spirit meth bottle there? Are they going to ask for something in particular or is Amazon going to send you the best seller? And that's a whole new world for people to get their head around which is sort of triangulating restaurants, voice, and that's an e-commerce ecosystem when 52% of all product searches are starting on Amazon, not Google. 
So it's quite interesting to have a think about that. So in summary, I'm five minutes early, yes. Um, so define your brand, back to the big purple slide. 80 to 100 pieces of content, scary. Um, and then look at the new wave marketing department, start thinking about how you might do that. Find ways to promote yourself on Messenger and really sort of test and learn on that, see what happens. Don't crave likes, crave visits and shares um, and saves as well. Investigate chatbots um, and just see what's going on with those. Uh, it could be quite interesting for you in that automation. Have a, a video strategy as well and it'd be quite brave to just have hard lines saying no static images. Always designed for the gram, as much as it makes me feel a little bit sick to say that. Um, create millions of GIFs and you'll really benefit from this and get serious about voice, which we'll talk about in a bit. <laughs>